In this video, we will show you how to install cable rail 1 8 inch standard assemblies in a level wood railing frame. Please watch this video in its entirety before you begin your installation project. We also recommend you download and read through our installation instructions. Our cable rail installation starts with planning the railing frame and cable runs. We have built a wood deck with structural posts that are no more than 6 feet apart. We are using Feeney intermediate pickets between posts so that there will be no more than 3 feet between each vertical member. If your railing terminates at a wall, be sure your termination post is no more than 4 inches from the wall. You will need at least 3 inches to allow access to the back of the post. We are using the recommended double post at each corner to allow the cable to run continuously through the corners without terminating. We have one continuous run of cable with two corner bends. There should be no more than two corner bends in any run of cable. We estimate the length of the cable assembly we need by measuring from the outside of each termination post. Cable runs with one or two corner bends should be no more than 40 feet long. Our cable run is 23 feet. We will be using 25-foot standard assemblies and trimming the excess cable. To calculate the number of assemblies required, we need to find the height of the railing frame opening. Measure the distance from the bottom of the cap rail to the top of the foot rail. The height of our railing opening is 29 inches. We recommend spacing the cables no more than 3 inches apart. We will need a total of nine cable rail assemblies. For details on all railing frame options, please visit our website. Be sure to consult local building codes for any special requirements for cable infill in your area. In this video, we'll be using cable rail 1 8 inch standard assemblies available at many local building suppliers. 1 8 inch standard assemblies are perfect for all residential and light commercial projects. These prefabricated assemblies are sold in 5 foot increments at lengths from 5 feet to 70 feet. Each assembly has a threaded terminal end which has been permanently attached to the cable with a special hydraulic press. The assembly kit also includes a snug grip washer nut and flat washers, as well as a quick connect fitting for the other end of the cable. In this video, we're using dome-style stainless steel end caps to cover, protect, and provide a finished look to the assemblies. End caps are available in other styles and are sold separately. We will also need protector sleeves for the four corner posts. Make sure you have all your cable rail assemblies and components before you begin installation. You will also need the following tools tape measure, safety glasses, work gloves, pencil, hammer, cable rail cable cutters, 7 16 inch wrench, crescent wrench, vice grip pliers, square, electric drill, drill bits, electric grinder with cutoff disc and grinding disc, cable release tool, cable lacing needle, tension gauge. Using our cable spacing measurements, we will now mark drill holes in all posts. Drill bit sizes vary based on the diameter of cable and the type of fittings you are using. In our installation, we're using 1 8 inch cable with standard quick connect and threaded terminal fittings. We'll need three different drill bit sizes. A 1 quarter inch drill bit will be used on intermediate posts and pickets and to pre-drill holes in the quick connect post. A 5 16 drill bit will be used on the threaded terminal post. A 3 8 drill bit will be used on the quick connect post. Here are the locations for the quick connect post intermediate posts, and threaded terminal post. Start by drilling the threaded terminal post with the 5 16 inch drill bit.
Continue around the deck, drilling holes in all intermediate posts with a one quarter inch drill bit. At the quick connect post, first we through drill the post from the inside with a one quarter inch drill bit. Then we counter bore with a 3 8 inch drill bit to the depth of the fitting. You can mark the length of the quick connect fitting on the bit before drilling counter bore holes. If you do not have enough access to the back of the quick connect post, you can simply through drill with a 3 8 inch drill bit. We are using protector sleeves in the corner posts where the cables will angle out of the post holes. We insert the sleeves into the quarter inch drill holes and gently tap in until flush. The tight friction fit securely holds the protector sleeve and prevents abrasion on the wood surface once the cable is tensioned. We are now ready to install the cables. Insert the threaded terminal into the post and secure it with a flat washer and a snug grip washer nut. We tighten the nut two to three full turns or until we feel resistance from the snug grip threads. Now we're going to lace the cable through the other posts. We recommend using our lacing needle for smoother threading through post holes. This prevents cable strands from catching on the sides of the post holes during installation. We lace the cable through the corner posts and all the other intermediate posts and pickets continuing around the deck. Finally, we lace the cable through the quick connect termination post and remove the lacing needle. Cleanly trim the end of the cable. Attach a flat washer and quick connect fitting onto the end of the cable and slide the fitting into the post. The special spring loaded quick connect jaws only allow the fitting to slide in one direction and will automatically grip when the direction is reversed. If you make a mistake, don't panic. You can use our quick connect release tool. First, loosen the cable by removing the washer nut on the threaded terminal fitting. Then, at the quick connect post, use the release tool to disengage and remove or readjust the position of the quick connect fitting. Lace the other cables through the posts until all assemblies have been installed. After all cables have been laced, we take most of the slack out of the lines. Hold the quick connect fitting with one hand and pull the cable tight with the other. The jaws will automatically lock when the cable is released. When tensioning on longer runs of cable, you can use a pair of vice grip pliers and a block of wood for leverage to help pull more cable through the quick connect fitting. We are now ready to begin final tensioning of the cables. Return to the threaded terminal post and grip the hexagonal shaft of the fitting with a pair of vice grip pliers to keep it from spinning. Tighten the snug grip washer nut with a 7 16 inch wrench to adjust the final tension in the cable. Be sure to follow the recommended tensioning sequence to help minimize stress on the railing frame and easily adjust uniform tension across all of the cables. Start at the center cable and alternate until all cables are tightened. We do not recommend using electric or pneumatic tools to tighten the snug grip washer nuts. If the nut spins too quickly, there's a risk that the threads will heat up and seize. Use the tension gauge to determine when you have tightened the cables enough. Trim the excess thread as close to the snug grip washer nut as possible. We're using an electric grinder with a cutoff disc, but you may use a hacksaw or electric reciprocating saw with a metal cutting blade instead. 
When using an electric grinder, be sure to protect the deck and surrounding surfaces from sparks or hot metal pieces that may fall. At the quick connect end, we're using the electric grinder again to remove excess cable that will impair the attachment of the stainless steel end cap. Get as close to the quick connect fitting as possible. We finish the assemblies with the dome style stainless steel end caps. Snap them on over the exposed quick connect fittings and the snug grip washer nuts. For lasting protection of stainless steel cable and parts, apply EnviroMagic Cleaner. Our railing is complete. For questions about your installation, visit our website or call us toll-free at 800-888-2418. Send in your finished project photos for the chance to win big cash prizes.